Quarterback meetings with Eric Ainge on SportsRadioWNML.com are brought to you locally by LCUB Amerigas Heritage Propane and Safety Systems. Call 1-844-OUR-LCUB, that's 844-687-5282, to register for LCUB's Automated Response Center. Have your LCUB account number ready and take a minute so you're always up to date with any emergency outage services. Also brought to you by Amerigas Heritage Propane, Amerigas.com, HeritagePropane.com. Go online after the video and find the nearest propane grill cylinder refill location. Whether it's propane for your house, business, a grill tank exchange, or converting to propane, think Amerigas for all your residential and commercial needs. Lastly, quarterback meetings with Eric Ainge are brought to you by Safety Systems. When it comes to your home, no one provides better security in audio-video systems than Safety Systems. Control everything with a tablet or a smartphone, whether it's a hidden TV or the temperature in your home, even locking and unlocking doors or shutting the garage door. Safety Systems provides true security and peace of mind. Trust Safety Systems, East Tennessee's leader in security and audio-video systems. SafetySystems.com. Now, let's check the tape. In this edition of Quarterback Meetings with Eric Ainge, we're going to go through how to use play action to attack a two deep look, a cover two look. Last edition, we did it with play action out of big sets, 11 and 12 personnel sets, to attack a quarters team. Now we're going to look at how to attack a cover two team. So you see the pointer right up here with the free safety and the strong safety right here. Even down in the red zone, a lot of teams still play cover two. This is 11 personnel. We have a tight end backside and a wide receiver. And then we have two receivers over here to the field. So the first thing you have to know when you're gonna use play action or any kind of passing scheme against a two deep team is what do they treat as the passing strength? We all know that this is the wide side of the field, but oftentimes when there's a tight end over here, even if it's in the boundary, some teams will actually treat this side as the strength. This would be the passing strength. I say that because in a two deep look right here, he's got half, he's got half. This middle linebacker's job is to run vertical with anyone right here. This number two receiver, if he takes the field, he's going to open to this side. So I can tell when you watch it right here, see what side he opens to. He sees pass, boom, right there. You saw him from going in the standstill before the play starts. And then right as the ball snap, you'll see it right here. Watch him open to the field right there. That's the passing strength. Right here, too deep backside, too deep to the front. Jason Swain does a great job of taking this mandatory outside release and really stretching. You can see his head right there actually even go back over here to Jason as the outside receiver. See, eyes, eyes, and then the ball gets thrown right down the pipe with a foot race with the middle linebacker. When you're looking at play action and the reason that that's important, the middle linebacker does a great job. He just opens, goes straight to the passing strength, and he just gets beat. We call that beat at birth. You got Brett Smith, a good wide receiver here versus a middle linebacker. He's beat at birth down the middle of the field. But watch this Will linebacker right here. Does a really bad job, and he's all over the run. I mean, he's still in here at about four yards deep, and we have receivers already down here at about 12 to 14, and the ball's already coming out. That's a really poor job by the Will linebacker there at Georgia, but I would expect nothing less from a Georgia football player. So as you look at it, too deep right here, too deep backside. Where's the passing strength? Do I want to take this whole shot opportunity or do I want to play right down the middle of the field? The reason you add the play action in there is to suck these linebackers up. We obviously didn't do a good enough job with this guy because he just turns and he's running immediately. He just gets beat on Brett making a good high point catch down in the red zone. Look at it from the back angle here. You can watch the linebackers, 43 and 45. He reads pass, see, he reads run. He's still in here and doesn't know what he's doing or where to go. Tight end, backside, protection. It's just a four-man rush, so it's a really simple pass pro. They're trying to run a little tackle game right here. See, these guys are trying to get inside, but they don't really know where they're going either. Again, I would expect nothing less from a Georgia football player, and you end up getting a touchdown in the red zone. If you know, when you, especially when you get down in the red zone, how, what kind of coverages are they going to play, where are their weak spots, and how can we go attack them? You use a big, tall wide receiver against a middle linebacker. You hold them just for a second there when you're going through to make that play call. Hold them just for a second with that play action. All that's going to do is slow him down just enough to get the ball thrown over the top. So right there, pause, and you have a foot race between these two guys. If this free safety out here down at the bottom of the screen were to drive over the top, then you got a chance to make that whole shot out there and throw the ball out here to Jason Swain for a touchdown.
but they didn't. They dropped, and you end up with just a nice, simple pass and catch there. For six points in the red zone, that's how you use play action to attack a two-deep team. As long as you know how they're going to take the middle of the field and what they determine the passing strength, you have an opportunity for success.